uh, unit we're talking about the CPU architecture. I believe so. Actually, we finished the context of the memories. Any questions related to the uh, memories or the uh, actually uh, the types of memories or things like that? Even the post, actually, I believe so. Uh, we continue uh, and let's uh, talk about the CPU architecture. Uh, the first thing that you have to uh, know is that the CPU is not uh, something actually uh, mysterious. It is a context of uh, gathered components working all together to finalize one task, which is the computation. The CPU, the central processing unit, it is one component, one hardware controlled by a software to finalize a computation task. No more, no less. It would do actually additions and subtractions, multiplications. It do a task of math, it's computing, calculations, that's it. How it is doing that? Because of the concatenation and the uh, work together, actually the, uh, the gathering of com uh, components together to finalize this context of computation. The CPU does not do anything, but comp computation does not do anything else. This central processing unit to process, what does it mean? It, it computes, full stop. What does it mean to compute? means to make calculations clearly said there is no secret nothing hidden it is like that those components all together to do only this matter of computation from the components actually that uh, we have to discuss and they are actually um, easy to, uh, to, to recognize the sem semiconductors actually to make the uh, components uh, be related together and uh, the ships inside actually um, Let's say actually, uh, we say actually, uh, we talk about actually, uh, let me find the word, the transistors. Yes, this is the one. Uh, but they are responsible for passing the, uh, either the electricity or just uh, blocking it. Remember that when we do the, the process, we are not to take numbers effectively. One, two, three, four. No, we are taking zeros and ones in binary format. And those zeros and ones, they are electricity. Either there is a pulse or no. Either there is a, a, a current passing or a current is blocked. So the transistors, each transistor would take respons responsibility of passing or denying uh, the pass of the uh, electricity, the current. Thus, uh, there will be actually an interrelation in between transistors over a microchip or a ship to finalize the task of processing. This is the, uh, actually the um, abstract view of the, uh, uh, how the CPU is working. So it's not just a, a simple ship, packed, mysterious, we cannot understand the content. No, now you can understand clearly what is the CPU, uh, uh, how the CPU is working, and uh, what are the main components of a uh, CPU. When we talk about the versions and the distributions and the, let's say, yes, the versions of the CPU or the central processing unit, first generation uh, and, the, and the first generation computers, and when we see them in the first generation today, there is a big difference. Big difference in what? The number of transistors inside. When you say that the CPU is faster available today, the CPUs available today, they are much more faster than the uh, prior generations due to what due to the number of the cal uh, calculations to be done per second the MIPS we discussed last class million instructions per second MIPS those instructions they are to be done due to what the number of transistors we talked about the cores that the CPU might have up to 3000 cores all together to work in parallel uh, the graphical uh, processors, the graphical processor, they might have up to 3,000 cores to work together. Each core is a processor. So if we compare a one core processor to the 3,000 core processor, what will you note? Immediately, the first thing to be noticed is the speed. Speed of what? Processing means the 3000th processor, when you boot the computer, you just press the button, immediately it will boot. But the one core processor, it will take time loading, 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 loading. Why? Because it is 
taken time to finish the process, the calculation. Thus, we talk about there is a theory behind of which the generations they are actually uh, uh, let's say ruled and pre-estimated, which is not named Moore's law. It is a law made by somebody not named Moore during the uh, 60s uh, of the uh, last century, saying that the transistors would be actually uh, uh, doubled per ship every 18 months. Every 18 months, yes. It is a rule that he actually set, and it is valid. It is validated. It's not valid. It is validated, and we keep going on, and if we keep up to date, if we keep going on, every, let's say, almost half, one and a half years, the number of transistors per ship would double. Means the processors today, after one year and a half, they would be very slow processors. There are new processors would come to the market which are much more faster than the ones available today. This is what the Moore's law says. Remember that we are talking about nanotechnology, which is a very tiny infrastructure, hardware, that we can use to build components. Thus, when we talk that the, uh, the transistors, the number of transistors per, per processor would double, don't say how and uh, where it would be, they would be packed inside the ship. Remember that the ship, we can control the size. So thus, yes, it is feasible to believe that this context or this Moore's law is feasible. This is, the, this is actually what the reference is, uh, presents to us. So we have to believe that. This, uh, this is the science. Uh, uh, components and how the architecture of the, uh, the uh, let's take the anatomy of the CPU and let's uh, discuss how this uh, CPU is uh, device starting product. Yes. Great. Uh, the anatomy of the CPU, let me come back. The anatomy of the CPU, actually, what are the, uh, uh, when you say that the uh, processor is, a con let's say, a group of transistors interrelated together, okay. Is it actually uh, arbitrary, just a group of transistors and that's it? No, they are segregated into groups based on their functionality. They are segregated, they are separated, they are divided into groups based on their functionality. Uh, we have a group dedicated to the uh, arithmetic uh, um, activity, means to do the, uh, um, let's say, Straightforward saying the uh, operation, the mathematical operations, which are the arithmetic operations, the addition, subtraction, division, and so on. Straightforward is an integral, let's say, logical unit, but it does only in this context of addition, subtraction, division, and so on. Division of what? Of the integral values. Actually, when we say uh, uh, integral values, when we say actually straightforward, uh, strict numbers: one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And we are having the same process to be done by another unit. If the numbers, they are not integer or integers. If we talk about the floats uh, and the uh, float and values and decimal values and double values. If we have actually uh, float and numbers, we are going to do the process the same, the arithmetic operations, but using the FPU unit, floating processing unit, or floating point unit, which is actually taking care of the same uh, arithmetic task, but with uh, decimal numbers or double numbers or uh, float numbers. Then we are having actually a, a, another unit which is taking care of the activities with the CPU actually to control what to do, what not to do. Uh, the use of the, remember also inside the CPU we discussed the register as to be the fastest memory which is available inside the CPU. Uh, uh, also, we talked about the cache memory, the level one, two, and three. They are also, uh, they, by default, we say that they are integrated to the CPU. One of them is out, but two, they are inside. Who is controller of this? The control unit. The control unit. From the other mechanisms that the uh, CPU utilizes or refer to to be much more faster is to bring what he needs as resources to make them in waiting lists. He does not 
reach the level of what is the data and he goes to fetch. No, in a prior, in prior there is a task of pre-fetch to bring what resources he needs before he needs them. For example, for the next operations, he will need uh, some data from whatever file or whatever resource. Okay, the prefetch unit will bring that data before the processor, before the processor needs them. Prefetch unit. So in this view, we talk about uh, the architecture based on four groups. The uh, URL, uh, or here actually uh, arithmetic uh, and logical units. Uh, the same, but based on the use of the decimal numbers, FPU, and you talk about control of the components, remember to control what here, if you say to control what, remember that the process is not only doing uh, calculations and that's it, also it is doing calculations with, let's say, smart way, because of the register memory and the, uh, the uh, um, cache level, uh, cache memories, so there are other things inside the, in, inside the CPUs, there is a control unit to control all. And also there is another technique to, uh, to make the uh, processor much more faster is that there is a prefetch unit to fetch the data the CPU would need, but in prior, in prior. What it is? Yes, in prior, to fetch the, the, the data before the uh, CPU need, need it. Uh, the uh, context actually when you say that the um, the, uh, the the uh, the processor is doing the arithmetic uh, tasks and also the uh, flow of lot and based actually uh, the arithmetic tasks from the float and based let's say inputs uh, okay uh, that's good what about the what about the prefetch data the prefetch data might be a text file might be a video might be an audio how it would be actually uh, input to the CPU. The CPU does not understand, does understand only the binary data. So there is a decoding unit. There is a decoding unit to make the thing actually be understood by the uh, arithmetic unit and the uh, float and unit, float and point unit. Decode what? Decode the data to be input. Decode the data that would be input to the, uh, to the processor. The uh, fastest memory available inside the, uh, the CPU is the register, yes? It is to be utilized to help the processor save and finalize the computation tasks. The register, it is not to store data, but to store what the uh, processor, the value that the processor is using in lifetime while he's computing, the register. But when we talk about the cache memory, this is to be utilized to make the computer, uh, the, sorry, the CPU uh, act faster and stores data locally to uh, to finalize the task, actually to finalize whatever he needs, but it needs to store data, this one. This is to store what he is doing, the data also, but what he is in lifetime, he is using to, to compute. Uh, when we say that, for example, I, I, we just we were talking about the GPU, the uh, graphical processing unit. We said that it can have up to three thousand cores. Uh, uh, how those cores would actually communicate with each other? How they would actually act with each other? Do you, there is a channel to let the, uh, the core number one to communicate with two and three and so on. We talk about actually the interface, which is a bus. We define what are the bus. They are transistors. They are actually uh, yes, uh, interconnecting. Uh, let's say wires, sort of wires. They are wires, but they are transmitting data. They are representing an interface in between the cores. A graphical view of what we uh, were explaining. Uh, just one uh, final review of this uh, bus. When I say that the uh, bus inside the CPU to be a wire, this size here is much more bigger than a processor. This size here, this graph that we see here. Thus, don't expect that you'll see a wire to go from a component to another. It is sort of see those black lines here. They are they are to play the role of a bus. 
but actually since it is playing the role to be an interface it is represented as a box here that takes care to transport to make the data pass from one level to another um, the speed of, I asked you a question at the beginning of this class, what is the uh, speed unit? How to measure the speed of the CPU? What is the unit you use to measure? Um, yes, the instruction per second, the hertz. Uh, remember that how we measure the instructions, it's based on a clock that the motherboard is having. And this clock actually, it is uh, continuously running and it won't stop due to what, even if you cut the current, the clock will never fail, and it will actually keep running. Due to what? Due to a battery available in the motherboard, if it is a desktop, or due to the battery that it is actually inside. Even for a laptop, there is a battery in the motherboard to power the time and the clock, controlling the speed of the processor and controlling other, other tasks also. Uh, so the uh, clock, when we say clock, it's a clock. It is a time uh, counter. That would be actually utilized to you for our context here to measure the speed of processor in our context. And the speed of processor it is um, the number of instructions per second. It is to be measured in hertz. It is to be measured in hertz. Actually, one, one processor might do millions of instructions per second. We talk about mega instructions, mega instructions, so megahertz. We don't talk about a thousand instructions, no, no, no. we talk about millions and millions of instructions per second. Yes, it is an enormous potential that the processors have. Yes, this is it exactly, exactly. Uh, but there are actually models, remember that we find differences in between CPU to another based on the architecture and based on the number of the cores, based on the, mainly talk about the architecture. So we talk about the high clock speed and a lower clock speed. Uh, so the high clock, trivially, they are doing more instructions than the uh, lower level, the lower clock processors. Final point is the number of instructions per second. Um, a cycle via which uh, it is considered to be the life cycle of the processor, how the, uh, the tasks they are uh, doing. First of all, is there any task to do? Is there any activity to do? Is there any input to process? So we fetch the data from what? From the RAM, from the RAM, from the red, from the random access memory, from the RAM, random access memory. If there is something in the RAM, so we have to process. The processor has to act. Yeah, to make the mouse move, to present a slide or anything to do. So that it is in the, in the RAM. So the processor is doing is, is acting in, in lifetime. Then uh, those data actually, if it is, if they are found, if there is something actually decided to, uh, to be processed, it has to be decoded to a CPU language to make the arithmetic and the, uh, let's say, flow, a float and point unit understand what is the found data, or what are in plural, the found data. So they have to be decoded. Calculations, calculations. Means, actually they have to be actually processed, whatever. The processor has to do his task. Then after, then after back to the RAM, but to bring the output, to bring the output, which is a store. Where in the RAM, it is not to store the hard disk, to store the RAM because the RAM is a memory also. So we are going to send the, the output to the RAM. We are going to send the output to the RAM again. And the cycle continues going like that. Is there any new instruction? If yes, decode. Then uh, process, then uh, bring output. Then, uh, then again, another processing unit, uh, processing life cycle to happen. Fetch, decode, execute, store in the RAM. Store in the, in the RAM, remember, and so on. 
continues like this. This is actually uh, an endless process. The process is running. <clears throat> From the tasks that you may actually do to <clears throat> to control the computer, uh, in the sense of making the computer more fast, is to maintain the health of the computer. The health here is in the sense of um, making the system actually uh, be free enough and have only uh, to control whatever is necessary. We take off all the unwanted data. We release the computer from holding unwanted data. It is said to be to clean, the, uh, let's say, the hard disk or the disk or the storage device. Because there might be actually data available in the computer that the computer is holding for future use or based on uh, former preferences. There are software that they are installed in your computer storing data expecting to be utilized in future while they are not so the computer we keep them actually we keep them inside until future notes those data they they can be actually accumulated and due to their existence the computer will take time to process them at each loading so whenever he boots he has to put them in the waiting list Whenever he boots, he has to put them in a waiting list and so on. They are consuming time and they are consuming memory space. While they are not actually utilized, they are only in a waiting list, in a cache memory, in something like that, in a temporary memory. So to empty this temporary memory, we clean. It is said to clean, not to delete. The action is to delete. The action will go to delete them. Yet, when we say that to delete, they are not needed, and they are not done by the user. You did not put them, you as a user of the computer, you did not put them, but your software, your list of software, they put those, the list is long, the list is very long here. They put those data in a temporary memory to utilize them in a future time, which they actually cause the computer to be slow and to, utilize, to actually consume and to uh, hold Space in the memory, reserve, allocate, space in the memory. So we will make the computer clean the disk or the, let's say, the storage device to be more faster. This way, we are going to gain memory. We are going to gain space in memory. And the system actually will be more faster and will actually perform actually better tasks. He will act, he will act much more better. These are not an action to be done by the system, it's not by you. The disk cleanup, it is a task to be done by the system. It is one of the operating system, it is one of the operating system tasks. If you are expert enough, you will be able to do them by yourself. But using the system functionality, the disk cleanup, you will be able to do it also. At the end, it is a task of delete. The clean, the clean, it is a delete. But you are not deleting as per the word delete. You are making the system to decide what are the temporary components to be deleted. So the computer will decide. Uh, also, from the tasks that you can do to make the computer act actually faster is or are um, because actually all of the data here they are not the unique responsible for making the computer uh, act slower and be actually a little bit slow, but there are other things. The defragmentation of a disk, the errors that they are actually logged and uh, registered uh, in the uh, registry periodically. All of them, they are things to be actually cleaned. All of them, they are actually to be uh, cleaned. And they have actually such tasks, they have to be done actually, not one time, but they have to be done frequently if you are utilizing the computer daily and you are having a persistent tasks, not persistent, but actually um, you are doing, you are working actually with a stressful work using the computer. So you have to do it actually periodically. This clean, this task of cleaning 
you have to do it periodically. From the other tasks is that you can, you can, in order if, for example, if you don't want to take off those temporary files, you may go for buy the second memory, either the RAM or the hard disk, or whatever depends on the scenario. So you may go for uh, buying a new, a new, a new uh, storage devices. You may uh, upgrade the software controller, which is the operating system, or the drivers utilized to the drivers utilized to uh, finalize a specific task in your computer, either the connectivity to the uh, network or your uh, the uh, tool utilized to manage the uh, the media you are uh, you are in question. Actually, the example is taking the graphics here, but not only the graphics, uh, even videos, even uh, let's say audio management. You may update those and upgrade those uh, those utilities. This is a technical process. See, see the CPU here. It is a lost paper. It is just a transparent paper. This is a CPU. This is a CPU. Yes, when you compare the CPU here to the one we know, the arbitrary it is much more, much more smaller due to the material utilized, due to the materials utilized. Uh, the, uh, the, context of, the context of how to do the same processing capability with this CPU, as if you are dealing with a normal CPU like this one like this one as if we are doing deal with the same cpu like this one because of the actual technology adopted we are talking about for example for example we talk about the pipeline to allow instructions to be processed at one time we just send more than one instruction or more one than one bit per input pipeline and we are just utilizing a pipe to make a data flow in multi-processor multitasking to do the thing has to be happen in parallel. At the same time, we, we are having more than one input layer. We talked about the 32 and the 64 bits inputs, multi-processing, multi-processing. We do the processing, yes, but more than one layer. Layer number one, layer number two, layer number three, and so on, on top of each other. At the same time, also they cause the computer to act fast. The life cycle we discussed earlier, they have, it is a four steps uh, life cycle. We fetch, we decode, we execute, we store. We fetch if there is any new um, uh, instruction to happen. We decode it, means we are making the processor understand the ALU and the FPU to understand whatever the inputted data, whatever the data, the input data is. And then after we make the execution, which is to process, at the end, we store in the RAM, we bring the output. The, the cycle actually will continue happening, uh, but here actually it's a simple, simple process, actually one layer processor, one layer processor, but when we talk about multi-layered processor or with pipelining, the scenario is, is different. One core, it has to do one task per input, but multi-layer see the number of instructions. See the number of instructions, visually even, visually, we see much more uh, tasks to do. The processor is capable to do more than one, more actually, and more uh, when we compare it to uh, a one core, let's say, uh, a basic processor. Due to a different technology. Uh, um, yes, the uh, integration of the nanotechnology I will discuss and I told you the integration of the nanotechnology is one of the contexts via which we, uh, we uh, uh, may see the uh, Moore's law be still alive and we continue uh, working and we continue uh, to act in action uh, is the nanotechnology. The nanotechnology is one of the contexts that via which we see physical components to be very tiny, very tiny in size, in size. Whatever the technology, whatever the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the the product utilized to generate such component they are actually to be uh, what it is the carbon yeah uh, they are to be uh, dependent whatever the material is plastic or whatever it is 
but the size is very tiny. So we might we might see actually a processor at the size of a wire. We might see a processor at the size of a wire. Yes, absolutely. As we saw a ship, a ship to be a plastic like a, like a paper, a paper, a paper, a paper light. We may see a processor, let's say a transistor, a group of transistors finalizing a task of processing a wire size. Uh, okay, we come to an end through this uh, unit. This is actually a future trend. It's just description of the technology itself. Um, um, I'll stop at this level. If you have any questions, otherwise, um, let me just take the attendance first, please. <laughs>